Welcome back everyone. Today I started playing in day two of the FIDE Blitz World Chess Championship being held here in Almaty, Kazakhstan. Now, as you guys know, after day one, I was in the lead with 10 points out of 12 going into this final day of nine rounds. So as we jump into it, obviously, as I, as I said yesterday, when I did my recap of the first day of Blitz, obviously there are too many games to go through all of them. So I'll start with the critical moments. So to begin with, in the first round of the day, round number 13, I had the black piece against Richard Report. And much to my surprise, Richard very quickly drew in this classic variation of the Berlin. So we had a 10 move draw in the first round. Um, obviously, I was a little bit surprised by it. I figured after one night do a lot of preparation, Richard would probably try to beat me. At any rate, he was happy to make a draw. I drew the first game. Magnus won his game. So that meant that after 13 rounds, I was leading by half a point. Now, in round number 14, I again had the black pieces against Jan Napomniachi, who was surging. I think he was maybe half point or one point behind me um, going into his 14 14th round game. Unfortunately for me, the opening was very, very dry. Jan did not try super hard, and he offered me a draw in a very slightly better position around move number 15. Obviously, I had to take the draw. And with that, Magnus was able to win again. He started with two whites in his first two games to catch me as we went into this very critical 15th round game. Now, round number 15, I finally had the white pieces against Vladislav Artemiev, the very strong Russian player. So we'll jump right into it. So I start with e4. He plays e5. I play bishop c4 again. Now, at this point, I'm simply trying to avoid classic theory and get a position. So I decided to play the bishop's opening, knight f6, d3. He goes bishop c5, knight c3. He goes c6, bishop b3, and now he castles. Now, in my game against Vladimir Fedosev, I believe d6 was played uh, round number 12. Obviously, it was only yesterday, but I already don't remember it. So if you guys want to see the recap um, or the analysis of that game, you'll have to look at the, at the day one recap, which I did yesterday. So after bishop b3, castles, I go queen f3 here, Artemia plays d6, I go knight g e2, bishop to e6, play castles, knight b to d7, and now I play h3 here. I would love to go knight g3, knight f5 right away, but after bishop to g4, I lose my queen on f3. So I play h3 here, bishop to b6 is played now by Artemia, and here I go knight to g3, going for knight f5 once again h6 is played i play knight f5 here and here artemiev hesitated he came very close to actually playing this move knight c5 and it's a big pity that he didn't do it because if he had played knight c5 this would have been a huge blunder and after knight takes h6 g takes h6 bishop takes h6 black is in a lot of trouble here for example if you move the knight to h7 i go queen g3 check king h8 and then i have queen g7 checkmate if you play a move like rook d8 same problem queen g3 check you have to block and after pawn takes white is simply up two pawns here so it was, it was very disappointing when Artemiev came very close to touching the knight, but then he actually played the other order. He took the knight on f5, plays knight c5 here. I go king to h1, trying to prepare to play f4 at some point, or go knight e2 and f4, but mainly just to get out of out of any threats along this diagonal from b6 to g1. So the game continues with knight takes b3, takes queen d7, queen f3. Artemiev played queen e6 here. Now, once again, if you guys watch the live video, Artemiev came very close to playing this move d5 right away. And once again, it's a great pity that he didn't do it because after d5, there's bishop takes h6, and white is simply up a pawn here. If you capture the bishop, you lose the knight on f6. So Artemiev goes queen to e6 here. I play knight to e2, d5. I go knight g3, trying to put my knight on f5. King h7, bishop d2, rook a d8. All very standard moves, just bringing our pieces to the center of the board. He goes rook e8. I go rook e2, guarding the bishop. Takes, I take with a pawn, because now the rook on e2 guards the bishop on d2. Rook d7 is played. I go bishop c3, g6 here, stopping knight f5. And now I go rook e e1, rook d8. Queen to e2, trying to prepare this pawn push to f4 and opening up the f file for my rooks. Bishop d4 is played here. I go f4, takes, 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 knight to g8, and now I go rook f1, lining up the double stack on the f file. Now, in this position, I missed a big opportunity here. I should have played this move pawn to e5 with the idea of bringing my knight to e4 from whence it can go to either f6, d6, or even c5. Had I done this, I think there's a good chance that I would have, I don't want to say won the game because it's not a big advantage necessarily, and Artemiev is a very strong player, but I would have definitely had chances, especially considering how low on time he was. Unfortunately, I play rook e f1, king g7, I go queen to f2, lining up the legendary triple stack here, also targeting the pawn on a7. Once again, another right triangle, we get b6, here I go knight to e2, he goes rook f8, 
play knight to d4, queen d6. And this is where I use a lot of time, a lot of time, I should say, not time, a lot of time trying to come up with a clear cut plan. Now, my initial idea was to play this move e5, but after queen takes e5, knight takes c6, if black just goes queen d6, I wasn't sure where my advantage really was. I can go knight d4, but after a move like rook e7, black is very, very solid here. Now, I probably should have done this anyway, because if you look at this position conceptually, this e4 pawn is definitely weaker than this pawn on c6. Black can try to stack and target the pawn on e4 down the road. So here I played queen to e3, whereas I should have played e5. Game continues with rook e7, queen g3, king h8. I go queen f2, king g7, queen g3, king h8. And here I decide to play this move queen g4. Now at this point in the game, I had 18 seconds more. If the clocks are correct, they may be off by a second or two. But I had essentially 20 seconds more here. Artemiev was playing only on the increment, the two seconds every move. And so I decided to play this move queen to g4. The, the reasoning behind playing this move is I felt that with a time advantage, I should try to go for it rather than settle for the draw. Now, spoiler alert, because I will just say this right now, when I look back at my entire day overall, I think that this was the single biggest mistake that I made on the day, as opposed to simply playing queen e3 or queen f2 and taking the draw here. Because after queen g4, c5, I go knight f3, queen e6, and now I play queen h4, king g7, and now I blunder with queen g3 here, allowing this move knight to f6, because I no longer have knight to d4 here, because now after knight to d4, there's pawn takes knight, rook f6, and black can just go queen takes e4, and he has an extra pawn. Additionally, if I try to play e5, black is knight h5, forking the queen on g3 and the rook on f4. So I play knight g5 here instead of knight d4, but after takes, takes, he correctly plays queen to e5. Does not take the rook on f6, because after rook takes queen, king takes rook, I can go queen to d6 check, and I will win one of the rooks here. If black plays rook e6, the rook on f8 hangs, you go king g7, there's queen takes e7. So in this position, he plays queen e5, which is a very, very good move. And now I just panic and play this move queen to f2. What I should have played was probably play queen e3. But even here, after queen takes rook, rook takes queen, king takes rook, black is significantly better with the two rooks for the queen. He can stack the rooks on the e-file, win the pawn on e4, and the king is going to be very, very safe on the g7 square. So I play queen f2 here, sort of spazzing. He takes the pawn. I go rook to d6 here, trying to go queen f6. Plays queen e5, queen e2. And here Artemia finds the best move in the position, which is his move pawn to g4. And now I throw the game completely by taking the pawn on g4. That being said, it's already really difficult to play here. I could have tried rook d5, queen e6, and then maybe h4 or something like this. Although again, after g3 or even f5, black definitely is a big advantage and it's going to be very difficult. Instead, I take the pawn, which is essentially just committing, uh, basically just like just throwing, just losing on the spot, I should say. I was going to use a different word, but let's not use it. So after king g1, there's queen h2 check, king f2, he goes rook e4, and now my king is just completely open. Not much I can do. I try, try to survive with rook d3, but after rook takes g4, king e1, he goes rook e8 play rook e3 here i could go king d1 but again it doesn't do anything because after rook g2 queen f4 at the very least black can always just trade go rook e7 and with these two connected pass pawns this the game is over so i play rook e3 artemiev goes queen g3 king e2 and now he just trades takes the pawn i go rook f2 and after queen e4 here i resign the game because black simply has these two extra pawns on the f and g files and with the queens coming off there's no hope of a miracle so very, very difficult game that, that I had in this third round of the day, the 15th round against Vladislav Artemiev. Now, again, as I look back at the, at the entire day's results, this was definitely the biggest mistake that I made. It's really the only game that I'm very unhappy with because I should have made the draw. Now, fortunately, in the same round, Magnus Carlsen on board number two actually lost his game, which meant there was a big log jam of players who were tied for first place after this 15th round. In round number 16, I won a very tense game against Alexander Grishuk with the white pieces. And in round number 17, I had the black piece against Dmitry Andrekin, who I've played in many of the RCC events on chess.com, as well as, I believe, I don't think it was a speed chess championship, but also entitled Tuesdays as well. So a player I'm very familiar with. Now, one of the things that I alluded to in regards to our Artemiev game is the reason that that game is, is such a difficult game to deal with and the reason it sort of changed the trend of the whole day is that after that game, it became this, this big mess where there were a lot of players tied for first and I really had to try to win hard with both colors, which meant that I stopped being objective and I stopped trying to play solid, which also means that every game became much more difficult and I had to use a lot more energy. 
So in the 17th round, I had the black piece against Dimitri Andraken here, and we get knight to f3, I play knight f6, c4, now here I go e6, g3, and now I play the strange move knight c6. Now the reason I played knight 6 is very straightforward. I was trying to get into this opening that we call the two knights tango. So it does happen in another game that we'll go over, but the normal order would be d4, knight f6, c4, knight to c6, knight f3, e6, and then g3. But by playing knight c6 here, Andre can plays bishop g2, I go g6, and now he plays d4 taking the center, and we have transposed back into the two knights tango. I also had this yesterday against Hike Martyrosian, who would go on to finish in third place in the event. So I play bishop g7, castles, castles, d5, now I go knight to e7, knight c3, d6, and now e4 is played. Now in this position, I could play e6 to e5, but the thing is you have to remember that I already pushed the pawn once to e6. So if I go e5, that means I've taken two moves to play e5, and essentially I'm playing a king's Indian here down a tempo because I played e6 and e5. So instead I take on d5, c takes d5, I go bishop g4 here, Andre can plays h3, and in this position I play bishop takes knight, bishop queen takes bishop, and I go knight d7 here, trying to open up this long diagonal for the bishop. Now already at this point this is a fairly miserable position, it's definitely preferable for white. Andre can plays queen e2, I go f5 here, plays bishop g5, bishop f6, takes, and here I make a big mistake. I take with the rook. Now, I initially intended to take with the knight, but I got a little bit scared of this move e5 and something happening on the diagonal here from g2 to a8, rook e1, and something on the e-file as well, and it felt very, very sketchy, so I played rook takes f6 fairly quickly, and as soon as Andreykin played this move f4, I said to myself, oh no, what have I done to my position? The reason is that now, if I take the pawn on e4, after knight takes pawn, when the rook moves away, white can put this knight on g5 and then plop it on this e6 square, and white is completely winning here. So I play rook f8, now, now Andre can goes e5, now he's got these great pawns in the center of the board that are just marching up, and this already is probably a technically winning position for white, but it's a blitz game, and you just keep looking for moves trying to keep the game alive. So I go knight c8 here, plays rook e1, which I think is, it isn't a mistake per se, but after rook e1, rook e8, white now has to push this pawn to e6, and after I get this, the knight blockade with the knights on f6 and e7, at least I can try to pretend that I'm I'm in the game. So after knight f6, g4 is played, I go knight e7, he plays g5, I go knight to h5, goes king h2, of course, stopping knight g3, which would fork the queen and the rook. I go c5 here, Queen d2 here. Bishop f3 apparently is just winning on the spot, but I understand why he didn't play it because it does hang upon an f4. So he goes queen d2 first to guard the pawn before playing bishop f3 and then trying to attack on the king side. So I go a6 here, trying to take space on the queen side. We get bishop f3. I go knight g7, h4, queen to a5. And here Andre can plays a3. Now, this move in and of itself is not necessarily a mistake per se, but what it does allow is it allows me to try to open up the B file immediately here with B5 and B4. So I go B5, rook h1 is played, I play B4, knight e2, and now I go rook b8. And at this point, again, white is still better, but at least now I have a clear-cut plan where I'm going to move the queen, take the pawn, and then activate my rooks on the B file, and maybe even swing them over on the third rank. So we get king g3. I play pawn to c4, Andreykin plays h5, here I take. He, take, he plays queen d4 here. Already this is getting very, very hard to play for white. Apparently the computer says rook a1 is the only move where white maintains a big advantage because the problem is if white takes on h5, now I, can, now I can trade and then take this pawn on d5 and just like that, I'm completely fine. So instead Andreykin goes queen d4 here. And here I play knight g6, which is a big mistake. What I should have done is I probably should have just taken this pawn here because now if white tries to take on h5, I can take the bishop and then win the rook on e1 with check. And if white tries to play like b takes a3, for example, now I have rook to b3. And all of a sudden I'm getting the rooks to the b file, the queen is active, and white has a lot of problems in this position. So at this point, it's very, very difficult for, for white to play, and so I should have done this. Instead, I play this move knight to g6, which is a mistake, because now Andreykin takes, I trade, and now I take on a3, and he has rook e to h1. Now, mind you, computer says it's okay, but the reason that I say this is a mistake is because at this point, everything I did was based on a miscalculation. After I played rook to b7 here, queen f6 was played. I completely forgot that this actually creates a threat. I thought after queen f6 I could go queen d2 and essentially win the game. The problem is that here white has this beautiful idea of sacking the queen on g6 and going rook h8, king g7, and then rook 1 to h7, which would be checkmate. 
So as soon as he played queen f6, I just panicked. Now, luckily for me, I'm still in the game because I have this beautiful resource, knight to f8, where I guard the pawn on h7, but I also don't allow white to sacrifice the queen on g6. Now, after knight f8, the best chance for white to, white to continue is with g6 here, because now if I play, let's just say I play rook g7, for example, white has this crushing move, queen f7, rook takes queen, pawn takes rook, and now white will get a new queen on e8, and white simply has two extra rooks on the board. After g6 in this position, however, I can still play knight takes pawn. He goes rook takes h7, or sorry, not rook h7, sorry, he goes rook g5 here. And then after rook g7, there are moves like knight d4, and I guess I go queen d8. And the position is, again, very, very topsy-turvy, very hard to judge what's going on. But this probably would have been the best practical chance. Instead, on Drake and plays knight d4, and now I go queen d2, which is a very tricky move here. Because white, suddenly white has to be very passive and go knight f3. And after queen d5, apparently g6 is still drawing. But if you don't play knight f3 here, the position is essentially lost for white. Or maybe there's rook h7 as well, but very, very hard to play at this point on Drake and very low on time. And he makes a huge blunder here by playing this move knight takes f5, which allows me to go rook b3 check. He blocks with a knight. If he goes king g4, there's a very, very nice checkmate here. I go queen to e2 check, king h4, queen f2 check. If you block with the knight, it's simply checkmate. And after king g4, I go queen f3 check, king h4, and then queen takes f4 is the latter checkmate. So he plays knight e3, I take, he goes king g4, I check, he goes king f5, I take, I check. Here, rook b5, and for whatever reason, Andre can plays queen e5 here. I don't really know why. I had like 25 seconds on the clock, and it was just kind of kind of weird. I mean, I guess he's done this in, in the events on chess.com as well, where he plays on till checkmate. Again, makes no sense to me, but it happens. So he played queen e5, and after rook takes queen, he simply resigns here, because after king f6, Queen takes f4 is checkmate, rook a takes e6 is also checkmate. So I win a very, very big game in the 17th round. That's two in a row. And I believe with this win, I was once again tied with Magnus Carlsen for the lead. So we will now move to the 18th round where I played with the black pieces against Alexei Serrano. So in this game against Alexei Serrano, once again, I was trying very hard to win in this round. Why had the black piece against Serrano? Magus the white piece against someone who's obviously very underrated, but nonetheless was a 2300 IM. So I figured that I had to go all in and try to win. So you get d4, knight f6, c4. And again, I decided to play the two knights tango. Now, one thing that I was saying in regards to the whole day and why that Artemiev game was so critical is that as I is that if I had drawn that game or things had flow, the flow had been a little bit different, probably I would have been a little bit more solid with something like e6, but this need to try and win every game. It just takes so much energy out of you. You have to put so much into it with white, with the white games and the black games, and it really does wear you down to some degree. So I play knight season six, knight f3, e6, we get g3, g6, castles, castles, b3, d5, knight bd2. Again, very, very, uh, very standard kind of position. And here I play b6. What I should have done here is I probably should have played knight to e4. And after bishop d2, knight takes d2, queen takes d2. White is a little bit better here after b6, but the position is somewhat playable. Instead, I play b6, bishop b2, bishop b7, he goes queen c2. Rook c8, rook c1, and now I play this move knight to e7, which is a huge mistake here. At this point, I was a little bit on autopilot, just trying to move quickly in the opening. He takes, I take back, and now here Serana misses a win on the spot. Plays this move knight e5. Now, I was very fortunate um, that he played this move, but one bad thing about this is that when I played this move, e takes d5, I actually did see this bishop h3 move, which wins on the spot. Maybe it doesn't win on the spot because I have knight d7, but after b4 and queen a4, position is really, really miserable for black here. And I saw it, and so when he played knight e5, I was happy, but at the same time, it also shook my confidence just a little bit because having spotted that, it's like, okay, something's a little bit off. You have to be very, very careful. So here I played this move c5, and this is another move that is probably reasonable for a computer, but for a human, I think it's a big mistake. I think what I should have played here was this move c6, and after bishop h3, rook c7, let's just say b4, for example, I can play a move like knight to e8 or even bishop c8, and I think the black is relatively okay here, and my plans are very straightforward. I, if white trades, I want to go knight f5 and knight d6 to cover the e4 and the b5 squares, and so the flow is happening once again. Instead, I played c5, and after pawn takes pawn, I end up taking with the pawn, which I really didn't want to play. But if I take with a rook after queen b1, I have this isolated pawn. White's probably going to be able to blockade. Additionally, there are ideas like queen a1, lining up threats on this long diagonal towards my knight on f6, and bishop on g7. 
So at this point, I didn't want to play this move, but I played it because I, I just thought rook c5 was positionally bad. Rook d1 is played. Here I go queen a5, e3, rook f d8. We get a4, a3, play knight e8. Now, one thing that I would love to do here is go queen b6. But the problem after queen b6 is I thought bishop to a3 was actually very, very strong. Apparently, knight f5 and queen e6 is okay, but tough, tough to find at any rate. So I go queen a5, e3, rook d8, we get a3, I play knight e8 here, goes knight d3, I trade, and here I play this move queen to b6, we get b4, c4, he plays knight to f4, and here I blunder. In this position, it's already a very difficult position to play, but probably I should have played something like a5 or knight to d6 here. Instead, I play knight f6, which is just a blunder, because now white can play this move, knight takes c4. So I take back, we trade, everything comes off, and now he takes this bishop on b7, and I'm simply down one pawn. However, I have this potential pass pawn on c4. So here I go knight to f5, he plays bishop f3, very solid move. I go g5, knight h5, we trade, and now I play this move queen to d5, goes bishop e2, play knight d6, he goes queen c3, and now here I gamble by playing this move h5. At this point, I can probably play, probably play something like h6, but after a4, b5, and a5 at some point, I thought this was fairly hopeless, and I didn't really see any counterplay, so I thought the only chance I had was to try and somehow use this pass c pawn um, to create play. So queen c3, I go h5, he takes, I play knight to e4, attacking the queen, Goes queen c2, I play knight to d2 here, guarding the pawn, also trying to go for knight f3 as well. Bishop e2 is played. Here I play this move, pawn to f5, a4, g4. B5 is played, and now here I go knight f3. Now in this position, what I probably should have done is I probably should have just waited with king f7 and tried to bring the king towards the center. Again, white is much better here after queen c3 and king g6, but there's no clear-cut win on the spot for white. So probably something like this would have made more sense, uh, but I decided to play knight f3, and this was simply based on a miscalculation, because after takes takes king f1, I play this move c3, and I simply forgot that queen takes c3 is playable, because after queen d1, it's not checkmate since white can block. And now the game is over. However, there is one very sad moment that occurs a few moves later where he goes g4, king h6, and he takes his pawn. Now, I don't, obviously, this was a couple hours ago, so I don't remember right on the spot what happened. But I remember at this moment when I played king h6, I did, I did think maybe there was some trick here after pawn takes, but I simply did not see it in the split second. Um, I do believe, again, my memory is not perfect, but I do believe I saw queen c4 here, but I thought after king g1 there were no moves, and I just did not see this backwards diagonal check. If I had spotted this move, queen c4, I would have won the game, because after king e1, there's queen e2 checkmate, and after king g1, queen to g8. If you go to the h file, it's mate in one with queen g2, classic lobster pincer, and after king f1, queen g2, king e1, queen to g1, I would win the queen on b1. So when he was thinking here about taking the pawn, I saw a queen c4 check, but I just missed the g8 square. For whatever reason, I just did not see it, and it's a huge pity because obviously this is a gift that was given to me, and I did not take advantage of it. Instead, I played king g5, and now the rest of the game is very straightforward. There's not a whole lot that I could do. Serana plays this very clinically here um as long as i don't get a checkmate on g file there's nothing i can do so it goes on eventually reach an end game here where i'm just down three pawns and the rest is very elementary serana doesn't really make any mistakes here and i'll just i don't even really need to go through the moves but eventually slowly walks the king up the board and i end up losing this game i can't take the pawn here because white just goes queen f5 check and after check queen e5 king g5 eventually he just brings the king to h6 and there's nothing i can do if i play queen to b6 check he can simply check on f6 if i go king g8 there's mate in one if i go queen g6 he just takes with the king and unfortunately i have a square if i go queen g5 also you do not take with the queen because that would be stalemate but either pawn takes or king takes and white wins so after king h6 i have to resign i lose a very very tough game to Alexei Serrano in the 18th round. Credit him, obviously played a very good game other than that one moment where he played that G takes F5 move. But I didn't see it then. And actually, I didn't even realize until uh, quite a while after the game when my trainer told me about this move that it existed. So uh, on the spot, I didn't see it. It's not like I played King G5 and I'm like, oh my God, I had Queen C4, it's winning. I didn't even see it. So that's how it goes. Magus would win his game. And so I was one point down going into the 19th round. Now, in the 19th round, I had the white pieces against 
Alex, or is it Alexei or Alexander? Sorry, it's uh, Alexander Shimonov, another Russian player. So the game goes e4, d5. We play the center counter, knight c3, queen e5. Now, I was aware that Shimonov had played this queen e5 check early in the tournament, but I didn't, I hadn't looked at it because I didn't take it to, I didn't think it was something serious. I didn't think he would do it against me. And so I played this move, knight ge2, trying to just come up with a setup. Now, what I probably should have done here is I probably should have used a little time and played bishop e2 with knight f3 and d4. But again, I was trying to play fast, just create some play at this point in my mind i thought i had to win all three games to have any chance to win the gold medal or win the gold medal or first place so i played d4 queen a5 here i played g3 now again i was just trying to come up with a setup and just move fast rather than thinking too much but unfortunately the setup was not really all that great by me so after c6 i go bishop g2 bishop f5 is played a3 e6 castles bishop e7 h3 h6 i try to go for this idea of rook b1 b4 and b5 opening up this long diagonal for the light square bishop on g2 but unfortunately this actually is just not a very good setup because after a4 rook c8 black is already a little bit better here due to the center i don't have a pawn on c4 my knights are a little bit clumsy here they don't really have squares bishop f4 there's just bishop d6 and already here i'm in a lot of trouble also, I'm down 30 seconds on the clock as well, which doesn't help matters. So you get bishop f4, bishop d6, I go queen d2, rook f d8, I trade, I go a5 here, trying to go a6 and maybe rook b7, also stopping knight b6, c4. Rook b8 is played, I go knight a4, he plays c5, and here I make a big mistake. I play this move, rook f d1. What I should have done is I probably, if I want to do this, I should have traded and then gotten rook d1, and black is still better here after pawn takes, knight takes, and bishop e4, but at least there's there's some play and some chances. Instead, I play this move, rook f d1, and now after takes, pawn takes, queen d4 here, black can go knight e5 and i have this very weak pawn on c2 the rook is coming to d2 and there are all kinds of problems here so i trade i play this move knight c5 here probably what i should have done is played something like knight ec3 or knight ac3 with the idea of rook b8 and rook b7 but again even here after check rook b7 rook d7 black is simply up a pawn here and maybe i have chances to draw but there are no chances of winning so I go knight c5, which is a huge mistake. So now there's rook d2, targeting both the knight on e2 and the pawn on c2. I play bishop f1, he goes knight e4. Now this is a mistake, probably in this position after bishop takes c2 or even rook takes c2. Black will win this game very comfortably. I'm also down 30 seconds. So I was very lucky that Shimana played knight to e4 here instead. And now I get knight b3. Because because after rook takes c2, I have knight d4 covering the f3 square, targeting the bishop. I also have rook b8, rook b7. And while I'm in trouble, there, it, there are some chances to at least save the game. So we get rook c7. I trade. I go knight to d4 here. g6 is played. Play a6, putting the pawn on a light square where it's guarded by the bishop. Also, I want to play rook b7 as well. We get rook d7. I play knight to b5 here. He goes rook d2, and now I play this move, bishop g2. Of course, I do not take the pawn on a7, because then these knights are really strong. After knight f3, if I go king g2, there's rook f2, king h1, and there's an Arabian checkmate here, or knight takes g3, which is also checkmate. Additionally, if I go king h1, same thing. Rook f2, threatening rook h2, bishop g2, and knight takes g3. is just an absolutely beautiful checkmate here. So I play bishop g2, Shimonov goes rook a2, I take the knight, and here I play this move knight to c3. Now one thing that's also important to note is at this point I could actually see Magnus's board and the game had ended and I saw that, that there was a shocking result, which is that Magnus had lost the game to Alexei Serrano, who I had lost to in the previous round. So at this point, when I when I noticed it after rook a2, I told myself, okay, you're in trouble, but just be solid, not be solid, but basically you have a chance to draw this end game, just make sure you draw the game and keep some hope alive for the final two rounds so we get rook a6 i check i take the pawn now black is better here he's an extra pawn but again with the three on three on the king side there are reasonably good chances of drawing the game so we get rook a1 king g2 he goes rook d1 i play rook b5 here knight c4 not rook b7 by the way attacking the pawn because then black is rook d7 so i go rook b5 knight c4 rook b7 a5 play rook c7 he goes rook d4 and now i play this very tricky move knight to c5 threatening to go knight e6 forking the king of the rook so say he goes h5 there's knight e6 and oopsie daisies this is the end of the game so he goes king g8 i check and we get this position here where i basically repeat obviously knowing that magnus had lost his game 
and playing against a player of Shimano's caliber, it's not the time to try to play on and hope for some miracle. So I draw this game and I'm half a point down with two rounds to go. Now, unfortunately, at this point, Magus would go on to win his final two games. He won his next round game in round 20. I forget who it was against. Um, oh, it was against Shimano with the black pieces. I also won in the 20th round with the black pieces against Vincent Keimer from Germany. So I was a half point back going into the final round. But unfortunately, Magus would also also in the final round of the white pieces against Noderbeck Abdustorov. And I unfortunately, despite obtaining a winning position against Pantala Hare Krishna, was only able to draw that game. So when all was said and done, I finished one point behind Magnus uh, at, at the end of the tournament. It was good enough for second place. Um, I did tie along with Heike Marta Rosen from Armenia, who had a really, really good result. He had something like two draws, and I want to say something like, I don't even know how many wins he had in the tournament, but he had a lot of wins. He also had some losses, but he did tie for second with me. I got second on tiebreak, so I get the silver medal. All in all, it's a good result. I'm a little bit disappointed um, with the finish for sure. I, as I said before, I feel like I gave everything I had um, today especially. But unfortunately, that third round game of the day against Vladislav Artemyev, when I lost that game, it changed the whole complexion of the tournament. And I had to really try hard to win every game with both colors. I was not necessarily as objective as I would have been otherwise because it was a win at all costs mentality that I had. At any rate, Magnus played great. He took care of business when it mattered. And unfortunately, I finished in second place so it is what it is and that's just how it goes so i'm a little bit disappointed but i'm not super unhappy obviously after the rapid event which was a complete disaster to be in the running and to have a chance even in the final round of winning first of finishing in first place it means a lot so that's life. Magnus wins both the Rapid and the Blitz events, but I do finish second place and I can hold my head high. Um, unfortunately for me, after having such a, after being in this competitive mode uh, for the last week or so and just really getting those competitive juices flowing, it's unfortunate that I don't have any more events for a couple of months at least now in terms of over the board chess, but I gave it a good go and I hope you guys have enjoyed all my recaps here from Almaty, Kazakhstan. I will be heading back to the United States tomorrow and then I'll be getting back to streaming, making content on YouTube and Twitch and everything else. So once again, make sure to hit that subscribe button below if you haven't already, and I will be back with more content very, very soon. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and hope you guys have, a, have had a Merry Christmas and obviously a Happy New Year's, which will be tomorrow. So on onwards and upwards into 2023 you go. I'll see you guys next year. Have a good one. Bye.